Good morning. Good morning. You App State fans, fans, y'all aren't y'all aren't bashful at all, are you? You pull a big upset yesterday, and everybody wears their yellow and black. <laughs> now, actually, congratulations. Kim Kohler is rocking her App State gear in the back. Yeah. So, any A and M fans, I'm sorry, but I had to open with that this morning. <laughs> A lot of us are in yellow and black today because if you can read my shirt, it says God's work, our hands. And so yesterday, which I'll share more about in a little bit, we had our uh, service projects for God's work, our hands, or at least some of them. Uh, and so we conclude in a way, um, we'll say we conclude that chapter of God's work, our hands, with this celebration worship service. But we also acknowledge that God's work, our hands, should really be the banner of our everyday life, right? It's not just a one-off thing. Uh, every day that we live and move and have our being is a day that God works through our hands. So um, as we gather for worship, uh, just a few announcements. One, at the end of your pews like there were last week, there are these, excuse me, Wyatt, these uh, announcement flyers. Please take some time and read these today, uh, even if it's during my sermon. I won't be offended um, because there's a lot of important information um, on these flyers about signups that are in the back and things that we've got coming up. Two things I'm going to announce specifically is that today is the last day to sign up for the Lenore Rhine game. Uh, sign up is in the back or in the hallway, so if you would like to take your family and go to the LR game, sign up today because tomorrow I make the call to reserve X amount of tickets. Um, so check that out, as well as uh, there is a big black tote that we are collecting prepackaged snacks. Hey, Hikaru, um, for our uh, service project next Sunday. We have our first Connect, and it's a third Sunday, so it's a service project Sunday, and we are doing care packages for what we're calling our carers first responders here in the community. So um, you can see in the back, you'll see the tote, and um, there's more information about that in that um, flyer in your pews. This coming Saturday, the 17th, our new little small group startup, Nest, new and expecting social time that's geared for any families who uh, have newborns or are expecting uh, or have youth up to three years of age, so three-year-olds and under. They're getting together this Saturday at 11 a.m. at Bellingham Park, weather permitting. If it's raining cats and dogs like it feels like it has been for two weeks, then we'll meet here at the church. But mark that in your calendars. And then um, after worship, we'll have a barbecue meal in the FLC. So please come eat. Uh, and then one last thing. It's actually two, but two adjustments to your bulletin. Uh, so pull that out, if you will. You will see that the psalm says that we're going to read the psalm responsibly back and forth. We're going to read it in unison. So consider the entire Psalm 100 all bold print. We'll read the whole thing together. And then our gospel acclamation hymn, we're going to sing right after the psalm. So before the children's sermon, we will sing hymn, I think it's 808, um, whatever number's in there. It's three verses. We'll sing that immediately following the psalm. With that, and go Mountaineers, are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Then take some time to uh, enjoy some handbell music from another uh, Mountaineer, um, and we'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Will you please stand as you're able? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us all beyond our days. Amen. This God's work, our hands Sunday, we begin with a dialogue and we acknowledge that we are a church that proclaims that God works through our hands. Everybody hold your hand up. God works through all of your hands because your hands are holy. So let us give thanks for the many ways that God's work is manifested through the work of human hands. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Blessed be the hands that have touched life. Blessed be the hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be the hands that have held pain. Blessed be the hands that have embraced with passion. Blessed be the hands that have reached out to heal the sick and comfort the dying. Blessed be the hands that have tended gardens. Blessed be the hands that have planted new seeds. Blessed be the hands that have cleaned, washed, mopped, and scrubbed. Blessed be the hands that have become naughty with age. Blessed be the hands that are wrinkled and scarred from doing justice. Blessed be the hands that have reached out in help of neighbor or received the stranger into their community. Blessed be the hands that hold the promise of the future. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. As we affirm God's work through our hands, let us also confess our sins, acknowledging the ways that we fail to see God at work and the ways that we fail to share the love of God with our hands and our hearts and our thoughts. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. First reading is from Exodus 32, 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it. 
and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. Here ends the reading. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. I want to invite our young people forward for some time together. That was me, not the handbells. Come on up. How's everybody doing today? Hey, Hikaru. Come here, Bubba. Hey, bud. How are you? Are you good? So... If you have not read the story on the back of the bulletin today, then I want you to have mom or dad read it to you at some point today. Maybe when you get home or um, maybe while you're waiting to get your food. Yeah, are they back there? Yeah. So there's a story on the back um, by a friend of ours, Miss Cora Lee, who is here. Yeah, she's right over there on the second pew. And... Miss Coralie um, tells a story about a offering that she um, was a part of at a church conference. Yeah, you want to get one of those? You're going to need it in a second. 
And so at this church conference, she had two quarters to put in this offering. And we made an announcement last week that we're going to take up a noisy offering today. So these cans are made of what? Metal, right? Like this bucket. What happens when you put change? It's loud, ain't it? Makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? Yeah? Well, we hear in our gospel text today, we hear a story about a coin, a lost coin. Um, and there are a whole bunch of lost coins out in this congregation. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And so what I want y'all to do in just a second, these cans here, because I don't have quite enough buckets for all these folks, I want you to take a can, and everyone who brought change for the noisy offering is going to raise their hand, and I want you to go collect all of this noisy offering. Now, let me tell you what it's going toward. We're going to hopefully, by Christmas, raise enough money to give a family a farm. How many of you have ever been on a farm before? Yeah, several of you. Did you see any animals there? What did you see? Cows, yeah. Horses. Okay. You're a pro at this, Hikaru. Yeah. And so this um, farm that we're hoping to raise has a cow, and it has several goats, and it has pigs, and it has chickens, and it has uh, shovels and all kinds of tools to grow plants, to grow a garden, and it has some... Um, a teacher to teach some folks how to garden. So we're going to collect this noisy offering um, now and a couple other times throughout the end of the year, and hopefully we will, by Christmas, be able to give someone a gift of a garden. So let's go collect that offering. Um, everybody grab a can. You got one? Everybody grab a can. And then after Miss Priscilla plays some music and you collect your noisy offering... Come back up and we'll say a prayer together, okay? Here you go. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, go. Here, come. Come with me. Come here. in which you work through our hands and the many other gifts that you give us. We give you thanks for these noisy coins that they may share your love to a family who um, is hungry. Bless this offering and all the offerings that we collect here at St. Mark's so that we may do your work in the world. We pray through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. All right, y'all can go back to your seats. Just leave them in that green basket for me. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. He can hang on to those. (laughs) 
Matthew says, oh, you really shouldn't have. Please stand as you can for a reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to this guy, Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling amongst themselves, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. So Jesus told him a parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together all of his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or another parable. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp or uh, round up a bunch of youngins to help find it, and search her house carefully until she finds it? After she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I'm going to do some repenting for a second, if I may. While I cheered and went crazy for the app game and for the choir over here who's wearing green in support of Marshall... I was kind of hoping y'all would give me the big, we are, we are Marshall. Thank you. You never let me down, Mitch. My Gamecocks, oof. It was a tough day for us. Now, I'll be the first to be humble and admit we played an Arkansas team that was bigger than we were, uh, more physical than we were, and yes, on camera, hello, friends from wherever you're watching, they were better than we were. The Gamecocks um, had a tough day yesterday. But boy, last night, here comes my repenting. On social media, I lost it a little bit. Because after watching the game yesterday, and actually how the team had really evolved from week one, they were blocking better. There were big plays that if we would have had two more steps would have been touchdowns and we would have pulled a big upset. It didn't happen. That's okay. But there were all kinds of Gamecock, one could say, faithful. Oh, fire, Shane Beamer. Oh, fire, Marcus Satterfield. That's the offensive coordinator. Oh, the quarterback was terrible. Oh, the line didn't block. Just going after individuals, even it was Twitter, even tweeting some of the players, what they call handles or their username. And I was just absolutely baffled. So I lost my cool and I said, y'all need to hang on a second. And remember that you are one part of a much bigger fan base and a bigger program. And I said, that team is made up of many parts, players, coaches, coordinators, a quarterback, running backs, wide receivers, defensive backs. I could give you the football spiel longer, but I'll, I'll not. Um, and they gave their all for you, just like the Panthers today. If the Panthers lose to the Browns in a little bit, or if the Bengals lose, we're really going to have upset Tristan. Um, you know, but these, these players, coaches, teams, they are one unit together, and they put on their all for you. The psalm that we just prayed together, psalms or prayers, begins with make a joyful noise. And it talks about singing, and it makes me think both about our handbell choir that played here during the prelude and the choir that sang during the offering. There's more than one bell up here, in case y'all didn't know uh, or didn't watch. There's a lot of parts there's a lot of parts in singing. How many of y'all are sopranos? How many of you are altos? And then there's some tenors and basses scattered in back there too. It's all 
a bunch of different parts, but they're all one unit together. They're all one choir or one handbell choir. They're one team together. Our noisy offering that we just collected, I talked about that farm a little bit, and there's many parts to that um, farm that we're hoping to raise for a community that's living in food scarcity, a cow, some chickens, a couple goats, a couple pigs, like I said, some tools, some seeds, and some education on how to grow those plants into crops that will harvest for their family and maybe even for their community to, to eat off of. Again, many parts a part of a greater whole. Then yesterday, we, a lot of us, got together for a service day, God's Work Our Hands service day. Raise your hand if you went to Christian Mission. Yeah, we got a swath of Christian missioners in here. Wonderful. And those folks, I hear some of them helped fold clothes. I hear that some of them helped package food to go out in deliveries. There were many moving parts at Christian Mission today. And Christian mission itself is just one part of the work that happened yesterday. How many of you went to Health Reach? While you're raising your hands, um, I'll also go ahead and make a little side plug that at our meal today afterwards, Bree, is it Nigel? Yes, got it on the first go. Bree Nigel from Health Reach Clinic is coming to um, speak to us. So I hope that if barbecue wasn't enough of a hook to get you to come down to the FLC, to get to hear about one of our ministries in the community, Health Reach, and what they do for folks in Mooresville, maybe that'll be the hook to get you to come down. So um, I hear that folks there did some cleaning and that there were some medicine supplies that needed to be disposed of. Again, many moving parts, a part of a greater whole. How many of you were here in the FLC yesterday? Yeah. And there was a lot that went on in the FLC yesterday. There was preparing for this wonderful barbecue meal that we're going to have shortly. There were some folks who wrote letters to uh, firemen and women and I, maybe other first responders too. Um, but I definitely heard someone wrote to a fireman. Um, there was also uh, putting blessing bags together. And they even did one of my favorite things to do for fun. They did some planning. Look at this alone. This plant is made up of many parts. There's a pot. There's some dead stuff that we call dirt. There are some actual plants, like three different plants in this pot. And it took hands to plant that, maybe took a shovel, took some water to water that plant. If I tilted it sideways, I'd make the carpet dirty, and I'm not going to do that. Again, a lot of moving parts, a part of a greater whole. And then there was a group that went to Home of Mooresville. Who went to Home of Mooresville? Yeah. Boy, we had fun. We unloaded and spread some um, bark mulch around the, the facility at home. Uh, we did some weeding and some trimming of shrubs, yes, in the rain. Um, and I made the joke at our little 8 o'clock service, I think I'm going to become known as the power washer preacher because for the second year in a row, I took my pressure washer at God's Work Our Hands service day, um, and we pressure washed both the front and the north side of the house where they had some mildew growing on the vinyl. While we were pressure washing, I became absolutely drenched. If I untucked my shirt, my shirt falls to about here. Well, when we went home, my shirt was hanging to about here because part of that pressure washing was standing right under where the gutter drained off the side of the house. Somebody asked me, I think it was Brendan, um, Jim Sifford's son, who said, you should have just brought soap and taken a bath. And he had a good point. All these different pieces of God's work, our hands service day, all a part of a greater whole. That greater whole, um, I reflected on yesterday while pressure washing and getting rained on simultaneously, the whole of the five promises of our baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper together, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, 
to serve following the example of Jesus and to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. That, folks, that's what our mission, we all just sang about, we all are one in mission. Those five parts are the whole of our mission as a church, as people of God, as the body of Christ in the world. Living into those five promises is what it means when we use this fun little catchphrase, God's work, our hands. It's through our hands that God works to proclaim, to serve, to strive, to hear and feed at the Lord's Supper, and then to live in community together. I thought about that last week. Our middle and high school youth, they decided to do a fun little thing to give back for God's work, our hands, Sunday. Last Sunday, when they got together in the FLC, they decided they were going to bake communion bread to share with you all here today at worship. Talk about hearing the word of God and sharing the Lord's Supper. They wanted you to see through their hands Jesus right here. And a whole bunch of parts, flour, yeast, water, um, honey, milk, butter. God's work through our hands, a bunch of parts, a part of a greater whole. It's pretty neat. And then we have our gospel for today, which continues this theme of bringing wholeness to situations where there's something missing. There's the parable of the one who loses a sheep out of a herd of a hundred and leaves the 99 who are all together and to go and find the one until it's found. And then to come back and rejoice, to celebrate, because now the herd has been made whole. Or for the woman who loses a coin and searches under her couch or under her doormat everywhere in the house until that one coin is found. And then when finding the coin, gathers all of her friends together. Maybe she takes all of those coins and goes and buys the equivalent from ancient Israel of a Coca-Cola, a two-liter, for everybody to have a little bit to celebrate. Hey, I found my coin. Found all my coins, and now I'm sharing my coins with you. A part that was missing, being made whole. I wonder how can we, not just through a, a noisy offering, through our other offerings, both of money, of our hands, of our thoughts, our prayers. How can we as St. Mark's Lutheran Church bring about a sense of wholeness in this community and in the community around us? How can we look for and then participate in God working through our hands or feet like Hikaru who's trying to Come back up here, my dude. How can we, through our hands, our feet, um, participate in revealing God's presence and God's love in the world? Our hymn that we're going to sing shortly, it's called God's Work Our Hands, fitting for God's Work Our Hands Sunday. Several parts of it. The first verse begins with God's work, our hands working together. Verse 2, God's work, our feet traveling together. The third verse, God's work, our voice singing together. The fourth verse doesn't have a a action or a bodily function in the first line, but it does say God is at work in and around us. Seedlings are sprouting, like hopefully one day this farm for this community. Bread's on the rise, like the youth baked. We're washed and set free like someone pressure washing in the rain. We're washed and set free. Through our baptism, we're humbled and honored, gifted with grace, called to respond in love of God and in love of our neighbor. So I leave for you this week to ponder this hymn and to think how can we bring this hymn, this dream, to a reality right here. Amen.
together with our voices, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for all in need. O oh Lord our God, your work reveals your creation each and every new day. The mysteries and the, the wonderfulness, the joys as well as the pains. And your work every day, O oh God, gives us the breath of life that we need, the grace that we need, the sustenance of food and fellowship that we need. We depend upon your work, O oh God. We are thankful. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, our God, it's uh, your work that allows our hands and our hearts and our voices and our compassion and our eyes and ears and all that you have blessed us with, all our very gifts and all our uniquenesses and all our abilities and all our disabilities uh, to work for your glory, to help build up the community, to help build up the family, to help build up the household, to help build up your church, to help build up your kingdom, O oh God. Bless our handiwork, O oh God. Bless our handiwork. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And O oh Lord, our God, on this 9-11 day, this anniversary of which a, a young person has already reminded me of the events of 9-11 years ago, well before they were born, the sadness and the tragedy, the unrest between nations and others. We pray for your wholeness and your healing upon all who remember 9-11, upon all countries who are still at war this day upon your peace, upon first responders especially that responded that day and remember the events of that day this weekend. We pray for your wholeness in our hearts and in our world, O oh God. May your peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds and use our hearts and minds and hands and voices to help share the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And, O oh Lord, our God, we pray for wholeness for many of those whom we love, whether it be for ourselves or for our church or for all our neighbors. We pray for wholeness for those that we name, including your servants Ken, Martha, Janet, John, Ruth, Viola, Barbara, Arden, Paul, Wendy, Diane, Donald, Sherry, Dennis, Steve, and all others we now name aloud from our lips or silently in our hearts. Just as you came, Jesus, to sinners and tax collectors, Come to us and grant us wholeness and grant those for whom we pray wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we remember our baptism this day and the five promises of baptism as we strive to live into those for your glory, to let our lights so shine, remind us also of the baptismal promise that we are never apart from you. 
that you have blessed us in the waters of baptism with life and life eternal. And so this day we remember those whom have been part of the communion of saints, who are part of this team as well, who make us whole, even as we remember them in their death this day. Grant comfort and healing and hope to them and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, giving you thanks and praise, and trusting in your hands to hold us, to save us, to renew us, to lead your servants, and to grant us wholeness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Before the wholeness of Jesus' love for the world was revealed in his death and resurrection, Jesus gathered around a dinner table with his disciples where he took bread, broke it, And gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we will celebrate communion together. Today we will celebrate communion down front, uh, and our handbells are going to offer some music. So we will first commune the pulpit side. And after the pulpit side has communed, handbell should be wrapped up. And so then we will switch and the lectern side will commune. Uh, And if you're not able to come forward for communion, we will bring this meal to you. This is the meal of God for the people of God and all are welcome. We will have uh, bread. You can, when you receive the bread, go ahead and eat it. And then there will be a little cup um, and we're going to use the other cups. Um, And so you can... Take the little cup, and then there's a receptacle on each side that you can drop after you have partaken of that as well. And we do have gluten-free. So come, the table is ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We just said, blessed are the hands that mop and sweep. Blessed be my hands that are going to vacuum here in a little bit. A fitting way, I think, to close uh, God's work, our hands Sunday, is again to remember those promises of our baptism rather than going through the whole affirmation of our baptism. Together, let's affirm our Christian vocation, which is wrapped up in the identity of our baptism. Sisters and brothers in Christ, both our rest and our work are in God. I ask you, will you endeavor to pattern your life on our Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and in the evening, at work and at play, today and all the days of your life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Then go in that vocation, sustained, nurtured, and upheld in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Will we go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other? Thanks be to God. And hang on one moment because they asked to have a prayer blessing in here before you go downstairs to go eat or next door to go eat. So let us pray. Or Lord, Lord our God, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Thank you for opening up your hands, O oh Lord, to us for your work for the food that we're about to receive, for all those who've worked to prepare the food for us this day. May the food be a blessing to us and our fellowship time together as we celebrate God's work, our hands, as we, uh, as we listen uh, to good news as well from Health Reach, and uh, as we go forth this day, journeying in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.